Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about various cryptocurrency portfolio strategies. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. So when you think about navigating the markets, it's always interesting to try to figure out you know, what are the most effective long-term strategies, the ones that navigate both bull and bear markets? And also, you know, what is the best short-term strategies, say, during just bull markets or just during bear markets? One of the things that's interesting is that, first of all, like, no one knows exactly, you know, when major drops are going to occur or when the tops will occur. But what you can do is you can at least look at the historical record to get an idea of what strategies worked out the best, all right? So we're just gonna go through a few examples here. We're gonna keep it relatively short. Uh, the first example is we're gonna say, what if you invested a $1,000 into the top 10 cryptocurrencies November 15th, 2015, okay? So November 15th, 2015, uh, in case you are not aware, is way back over here, right? November 15th, right here, 2015. Um, so right around this area right here. So what happens if you had invested kind of just as this bull market was getting started? You can see right here, November 15th, 2015, $1,000. If you just put $1,000 into the market back then, if you waited your thousand dollar buys by market cap your thousand dollars today <coughs> would be worth three hundred and forty one thousand if you weighted it by the square root of market cap your thousand dollars back then today would be worth five hundred and sixty seven thousand and if you weighted it by the natural log of market cap your thousand dollars back then would be worth seven hundred and thirty eight thousand so what you'll notice is that by buying it then, weighting it by market cap, underperformed the natural log of market cap. In fact, natural log of market cap outperformed market cap weights by more than 2x. You can see that during the bull market back then, it was also true, right? Now, what if we change the starting date, okay? And instead of doing it, say, at like the beginning of a bull market, we do it at the beginning of a bear market. So in this case, let's go to 2018. And let's actually look at January 1st of 2018. Now it's going to take it out to today. But if you just are curious about it in, in a bear market, if you had invested thousand dollars into the cryptocurrency asset class january 1st 2018 would have sucked for a while uh, but your thousand dollars today if you weighted it by market cap would be worth 4.5k right so you'd be up almost 5x even if you bought the top of the market back then what's interesting is if you look at the square root and natural log of market cap they underperformed in the bear market so what you really want to do, for those that have a crystal ball, and many of you, I'm sure, do because you criticize me all the time, so you must have one. Um, for those with a crystal ball, if you know when the market's going to top, then historically, weighting it by the square root of market cap or natural log of market cap outperforms market cap weights in a bull market. But in a bear market, market cap weights outperform square root and natural log. And the reason for that is because altcoins get annihilated in a bear market, right? All Bitcoin pairs go down. And when you're taking the square root of market cap and the natural log of market cap, effectively what you're doing is you're putting less towards Bitcoin and more towards altcoins. So in a bear market, it, it pays to be a Bitcoin maxi, um, or you can go to cash, right? Cash is king in, in midterm years, 2014, 2018, and 2022. But if you don't want to sit in cash and you just want to, you know, carry the Bitcoin maxi hat, which I often do, 
uh, combination of that and, and cash in those years, then you should know that at least holding Bitcoin will likely outperform even if Bitcoin still goes down in those years. And you want to be heavier market cap weights in bear market years and heavier square root and natural log weights in bull market years. Now, if you change this to, say, March of 2020, or sorry, April of 2020, after the, the crash, let's go through it. And you bought the top 10. If you bought the top 10 back then, and you weighted it by market cap, your $1,000 within a year would have been worth $10,000. If you had weighted it by natural log, it would have been worth $13,000. Okay? The interesting thing, though, I find this really interesting. And, and, and it really goes to show why this cycle, to a large extent, has been different. Is that natural log from that point has actually underperformed market cap weights. Why is that, right? So what I said earlier held true for so long, right? Higher allocations into altcoins in bull market years, higher allocations into Bitcoin in bear market years, if you had to pick either Bitcoin or alts. But this cycle has been different in some ways because market cap weights have outperformed log of market cap weights ever since 2020 like you know you can see over here they're basically equivalent and then market cap weights have actually done better now two reasons one reason is it we're looking at coins that were in the top 10 in april of 2020 right so those have really started to underperform a lot of those have become relics so if you were to take it from just say the last couple of years it might look different and we'll look at that in a minute but this goes to show you if you wait it like that, and then you get into a cycle like the one we're in right now, where Bitcoin dominance just has gone up a lot longer than people thought, you can find yourself where you would have just been better off with Bitcoin, right? Now, if you change that, though, to the current top 10, but you go back to that date, the problem is that some of them didn't exist. But if you knew what was going to be in the top 10 back then... You know, some of them would have been like, you know, multiple hundreds down. Obviously, that would have significantly outperformed, right? That $1,000 would have been worth 83000 today versus 17000 if it was just weighted by market cap. But what I really want to do is go look at a starting date of January 1st, 2023. Now, if you do that, you'll find that the, the, what we previously said holds true. Right, that natural log of market cap has actually outperformed market cap weights. So here's the thing: what what are the lessons to be learned? <coughs> the lessons to be learned is that some level of diversification is is fine. Um, the other lesson to be learned is that a lot of altcoins from one cycle will become relics in the following cycle. So holding on to those altcoins and becoming a bag holder is not the way to go, generally speaking. So if you are going to follow this strategy, it tends to it tends to be a good idea to focus on, you know, the coins that are, you know, newer or in the top 10 this cycle and not kind of holding on to ones that were in the top 10 in prior cycles, hoping that they'll make a comeback. Sometimes they do, but the data, you know, certainly speaks for itself and it, it shows that it, it's better to just move on with, you know, sort of the you know, out with the old and with the new, it tends to be better to move on rather than to just kind of hold the bags from 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 prior cycles. This is sort of a long-term thing. So, I mean, it essentially shows that diversification is okay, but <coughs> it's better to, to understand that, that some alts do become bleeders and they never stop bleeding and it, you need to be able to adjust your strategy, right? And, you know, for me, I was mostly just Bitcoin for three years because I thought Bitcoin dominance was going to go up. And it did. Right. And I mean, it was it was an effective strategy. It was it was a strategy that was relatively low risk. And I didn't have to worry about if I was going to get rugged on some altcoin. But again, like anything, every cycle, there are always some alts that do outperform Bitcoin. And this this cycle has been no different, even though we have been in a Bitcoin dominance uptrend. It has been no different. But one thing to consider 
Because if you look at the advanced decline index of the top 100 cryptocurrencies, it looks really different from last cycle, right? Last cycle, we saw the ADI drop until 2020, and then it started going up. That was all because of the money printing. This cycle, this has been going down. That's why this cycle might feel different than last cycle. It feels different because last cycle, alts were going up with Bitcoin. All Bitcoin pairs were outperforming. This cycle, we've seen all Bitcoin pairs underperform. The reason, more than likely, is because quantitative tightening has not ended, right? And, and so that's why it feels different than last cycle. And you can see it here, right? Bitcoin has done better than most alts. But some of those ones in the top 10 have certainly done, done better than Bitcoin if you measure them from the low, right? And that's the key thing, if you measure them from the low. But, you know, the other thing, though, is that if you measure them from, let's say, instead of going from, say, January 1st, 2023, if you look at them as measured from, say, January 1st, let's go to January 1st, 2020. I'm calculated out. You can see that market cap weights outperform natural law, right? So that shows you that, like, you know, you can certainly cherry pick the bottom. But if you had just stayed Bitcoin heavy throughout the entire bear market, even till now, you're actually outperforming a lot of the people that DCA'd alts all the way down. Now, it doesn't mean that they're not doing okay. I mean, some of those alts are up quite a bit. But a lot of those alts that are up quite a bit also got annihilated over here. And many of them, if you look at them, they're actually at lower values on their Bitcoin pairs today than they were at the end of 2021. But hopefully this is a useful video for you guys. I know it's a little bit different than what we normally do over here. But it just goes to show you, you know, how do you weight portfolios? And, and again, you know, bear markets and bull markets are all part of the cycle. I wouldn't really worry too much about either one. Just know that you're, you're going to have both. And, and figure out what strategy works best for you. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. You can, of course, play around with this uh, portfolio tester and see you know what, what you think works best for you. Anyways, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.